Soon, the Nebraska legislature will convene for the 2024 session. With a more divisive tone spilling into the previous session, the upcoming year will be a true test of the nation's only nonpartisan legislature. We discuss that tonight on Speaking of Nebraska. Thanks for joining us on Speaking of Nebraska. I'm Nebraska Public Media News Director Jay Omar. The 2023 legislative session saw contentious debate and a months long filibuster. Tones grew sharper among senators as the session progressed and protesters filled the rotunda on more than one occasion. Nebraska's nonpartisan structure is unique in the nation, but are changes on the horizon at the Capitol? But before we look forward, Nebraska Public Media News reporter Jolie Peel looks back on what happened and didn't happen in this year's 60 day session. Voting no, Senator Merman. Voting no, Senator Raybould. Voting Controversial yes, bills. LB 574 is a bill. Tough conversations. The title of the bill is Let Them Grow. Filibusters. I have never been afraid of another Nebraskan, especially given all the all things that Nebraska senators deal with every legislative session. But 2023 brought something the state hadn't seen before. An unprecedented flow of protests. debates about procedure. The courts in Nebraska have been very broad in their approach to the single subject rule when it comes to legislation passed by the legislature. And arguably the most divisive session in the unicameral's history. I have talked to multiple people in that room who do not believe that there was any negotiation in good faith. And I can tell you from looking at the amendment that is before us today, it is not a compromise. By the time session ended, some bills had passed, including the highly debated legislation combining abortion restrictions and limits on gender affirming care for minors. Some senators claimed the bill was unconstitutional, which led to a lawsuit. A judge dismissed the lawsuit in August, saying the bill did not violate the Nebraska Constitution's requirement that bills cover only a single subject, because both proposals covered health care. That ruling is currently being appealed. You literally have to cheat at every moment of this debate. In every possible way, you are cheating. And it looks bad. It looks really, really bad. And the contentious session also saw the passing of a law allowing concealed carry of a firearm without a permit and a bill allowing tax credit funded scholarships to private and religious schools. But one of the most talked about subjects was a months long filibuster by Senator Michaela Kavanaugh, a tactic she and other allies say they plan to continue next year. The dust has settled for now. And as the calendar moves closer to January, the 2024 session is shaping up to be a test for the Nebraska legislature. I'm Jolie Peel, Nebraska Public Media News. Joining us now are four Nebraska state senators. Senator Carol Blood, who represents District 3 in Bellevue and Papillion. Senator Danielle Conrad from District 46 in Lincoln, Senator Jana Hughes from District 24 around Seward, and Senator Mike Jacobson, who represents District 42, centered in North Platte. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I would like to discuss the Nebraska legislature, past, present, and future. Senator Conrad, we'll start with you. Great. The 2023 session seemed a little bit more divisive than normal. Do you agree with this? And if so, what factors do you think might have played a role in that? Sure. Well, thank you so much, Jay, for having us on the program today. It's great to see this program back, and we're all really honored to be here. Um, as the member with the second most seniority in the body, I have a little bit of history to reflect upon when answering this question. But I think, unfortunately, we really hit a low watermark when it came to the tenor and tone of our politics in the Nebraska legislature in 2023. That being said, I'm hopeful we have nowhere to go but up together. And I think leaders like the ones you've assembled here today will help us do that. Um, Nebraskans have a precious, precious gift in our unique unicameral legislature that we run and serve in a nonpartisan way. And that institution <coughs> has served our citizenry so well for decades and has been a generational point of pride rightly, because it helps us to keep out divisive, toxic, 
partisan shenanigans from our politics, focus on people, focus on policy, and get the work done for Nebraskans. So that institution has been tested um, due to things like voter suppression and term limits and gerrymandering. These things have weakened the independence and strength of the institution. That being said, we still have a better system than any of our sister states and the federal government. And I'm confident that leaders like the ones assembled here today and our colleagues who aren't with us can figure out how to right the ship and get back to our proud nonpartisan spirit. And thank you. And we will circle back to the current structure of the Unicamera in a little bit, so we will have more discussion on that. Senator Jacobson, most Nebraskans only see what kind of happens on the surface level at the Nebraska legislature. Behind the scenes, is there more compromise happening that might meet the eye? I don't think there's any question that there is. Um, and I can tell you that uh, I look at this year in particular when you look at all of the things that were happening and some would argue not happening on the floor, there was a tremendous amount happening behind the scenes. Uh, you know, I think that's where the relationship building uh, goes on. Uh, I can tell you that that I, I like I kind of pride myself that I think I've got a, a good personal relationship with every Democrat in the body, even though I'm a registered Republican. Uh, and I would tell you that I made it a point when I first came down here uh, the year before uh, to really build a personal relationship with all state senators. I had the privilege of sitting next to uh, Speaker Hilgers. Uh, in the, the 30 days that I served in the legislature, in the 107th uh, legislature. And I remember one day when he told me, he said, you know, Mike, he says, uh, when there's days when you get frustrated, he said, lean back in your chair, look up at the ceiling, look around this place and say, this is an amazing place. We have an incredible responsibility. People have entrusted us to be here to represent their views. Don't ever forget that. And I haven't. Great. great. Senator Hughes, we'll turn to you. All right. This is your first term in the Nebraska legislature. Yes, it was. Can you talk us through a little <laughs> bit about what your expectations were coming in and how the session played out compared to those expectations? Um, right. So coming in, I didn't have specific expectations. I've never, you know, a lot of people have come in have you know, maybe worked as a page or, you know, helped. Uh, maybe they were a staff member at one point and or had family members do it. And I um, was new to the whole process, if you will. So I guess... Um, I didn't have a lot of expectations. I had, I knew that that prior senators, in fact, uh, Senator Mark Coulterman, who I replaced, enjoyed it and really enjoyed the camaraderie and meeting the other senators and other staff, just all the the people that you meet and the, the good things you do and, and developing the relationships within your own district too, because it starts there with your campaign and meeting all those guys. Um, so I, I don't know if I had specific expectations. I know, um, I believe at one point I called it a dumpster fire, what was going on. Um, so it was not uh, what I would have chosen it to be, I guess. Um, I hope that we have all learned from it. Uh, I know I, and, and I probably have learned some bad habits from it because I haven't gone through um, the real deal. One of the, the things at the end that I just... I really don't like is that the, we had these huge package bills. They felt like we almost became a Washington, D.C. Um, I am really looking forward to one bill, one vote, uh, that we can just vote on the merits of that bill. So I, I hope we can get back to that. Uh, I think ultimately, I mean, we ended up getting a lot done and through. Um, I don't know that uh, there are things that got through maybe that I'm not as happy with, but I hope we can get back to it. And I know, you know, Nebraskans are, I've always said this on the campaign trail and everything, Nebraska is a place where neighbors help neighbors. Uh, and, and I call it the two degree of separation. If you start talking to somebody in Nebraska, within two people, there's some connection. I, I, and I don't care where you're at in the state of Nebraska, that's how it is. And so we can revive that and get back to, and have discourse, and, and maybe we're not gonna agree, but we can be civil about not, you know, we can agree to disagree and be civil to each other. And we need to get that back because that, kids watching this or anything, we're adults and we need to be able to handle it professionally, um, kindly, civilly, and we were raised here and I think we can get that back. So that's what we're, what's what we're gonna work on this next semester, or I call it semester, <laughs> the next session. I keep doing that. I, I feel like I'm in school it's again, right? I am learning yes. so much. I do feel like I'm back in school. So I keep calling them semesters and 
Thank you very much. And Senator Blood, similar question, kind of opposite side of the coin. You were first elected in 2016. You're on the back end and I'm on the front end. I think it's not a horse. (laughs) Can you talk a little bit about what changes you've noticed since you were first elected in 2016? Yeah, absolutely. So I can tell you the reason I got into the legislature is because I love policy. And you've heard me say it before, policy makes me giddy. And my favorite part of being a senator prior to this year was debate. Because of all that's happened, because of this brutal session, um, a lot of the freshmen did not get to experience the real spirit of debate. People weren't turning around and listening to people, which had always been done in the past. And so they were hunched over on their computers, um, knowing how they were already going to vote. We really have missed out on the true communication that we have on the floor that often changes, and I can give you example after example, over the last two decades, where really big things got done, and they got done because we worked together on the floor, and we debated, and we shared facts, science, data. Now we're to a point where people are being handed information and reading it verbatim, and sometimes it's wrong information which makes us look ridiculous as a body. So for me, having been there for as long as I have been, is I miss the true spirit of working together and listening to each other. Um, And frankly, I'm gonna kind of change the conversation here a bit. We have members now that feel emboldened to be rude to you face to face off the mic, which I have never seen before. And mostly it's because they haven't gotten their way on something or they don't agree with you on something. Um, People can disagree with me as much as they want, but that does not give them permission to be rude. And so for me, it's been very unfortunate and, and heartbreaking that we have the ability to rise up and we have the ability to go forward. Um, but we have had a brutal year and there are individuals who need to get on the same train we're on and move things forward and put their egos and leave them at the door. So that will lead us into a kind of next round of questioning, which is a little bit more diving into some of the things that you all touched on. Uh, I'll start with you, Senator Conrad, but please feel free to jump in if you have something to add. Polarization seems to be creeping in at all levels of government. What would you say to a Nebraskan right now who's concerned that you know, some of the things that Senator Blood maybe hinted at are hindering the ability of the unicameral to function properly? Sure. Well, and I wholeheartedly agree with a lot of the comments that my colleagues brought forward here today. And that's actually one of the biggest reasons why I jumped back into political life after serving for eight years and then being term limited and then wanting to go back. Um, I was deeply concerned about polarization and divisiveness in our politics. And I saw it coming to Nebraska. And I knew that I had to try and do more with my unique experience to try and make a positive difference. And I think my colleagues are 100% right. We wouldn't tolerate these kinds of shenanigans and this type of bad behavior in our homes, in our businesses, or in our schools. And we shouldn't tolerate it in the upper echelons of power. It's beneath the dignity of those institutions and it's not what Nebraskans want or sent us there to do. What I think is driving that is a lot of different things. Um, Some of these tools of oppression that impact our democracy overall, some of this doom scrolling and um, kind of manipulation that we see on our social media feeds. And I think just the fact that it takes a long time to get up to speed on the issues and the process and the rules and build relationships All of those pieces are requisite to formulating good public policy. And so when we have senators with less experience, it just really hinders our ability um, to go deep on the policy and to have those trusting relationships with each other. So that being said, we again take an oath to our office to run and serve in a nonpartisan way. And it's a very deliberate choice by those who have a vote in the floor of the legislature to decide whether or not to honor that when they cast their vote on rules that diminish our institution, when they cast their vote for elected leaders and chairs um, that don't have the experience Mm -hmm. and passion 
that other people running for those offices have. When they set an agenda that focuses on manufactured, divisive political issues instead of common sense, common ground issues that bring Nebraska together. These are deliberate choices and they're a leadership failure. That is exactly how we got to where we got in 2023. That's the bad news. The good news is there's always hope for a better tomorrow. There's always a hope to return to our roots. There's always a hope to honor our oath of office and the will of the people. I'm confident that we can do that together, but it's going to take choosing a different path, <clears throat> choosing a path that allows for regular debate, normalized debate, robust debate, where we can disagree and should disagree. It'd be awfully boring if we all thought the same thing, but we need to focus on the issues. Everybody agrees workforce is our number one issue in Nebraska. Let's talk about the solutions attendant there too. Childcare, education, job training, infrastructure. Those are issues that we should be debating and we're not gonna have to pull out all the stops in a rules fight um, to take up good solutions to childcare. So that I think along with the relationship building, going deep on the policy and setting an agenda that's right for Nebraska is how we come out of this together. But Senator Conrad, don't you also believe that a lot of this also starts with the ballots and who gets elected and how they get elected? Nebraska, in our body right now, they've refused to get rid of dark money in Nebraska. We know that there are people that have had their way bought into office, therefore taking away the vote of Nebraskans. And if we continue on that path, no matter how hard we work, no matter how positive we are, we're going to keep getting people in there that got in there differently than many of us that will have a different view. And I will jump in and give Senator Jacobson yeah. and Senator Hughes an opportunity. Let, let me just maybe redirect a little bit in terms of some of the positive things that have occurred. Uh, I look at the way the unicameral is structured, and, and I agree with Senator Conrad. I think it's a very unique, it was a unique experience that's worked, and I believe it does work. Uh, and it works from the standpoint you've got 49 of us. Every bill that gets introduced gets a hearing. That doesn't happen at the federal level. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the fact that we're dealing with one house and we're going through three readings, we do have an opportunity to air a lot of that information. I would tell you that it was unfortunate that we had the filibusters that we did. I think that really raised the frustrations and caused a division within the body because of that. Uh, but I can tell you that that last week in the legislature was amazing. I mean, I think we'd all agree that that last week we got the very things that we've talked about. We got genuine debate on bills. People were, were doing the things they did the prior year when I was there in, that, in the back end of that session. I think that we ended the legislature on a high note. Uh, I agree with Senator Hughes, we all learned a lot uh, I think we're all going to come in with a different attitude and a different perspective, I think, in 20 uh, in this next year, in 2024. Uh, I also want to say that Speaker Arch uh, is a very principled individual, and he took a lot of attacks. But I'm telling you what, he was the right guy to lead the legislature this year. And in the end, we got a lot done. Maybe not the way we wanted to get it done, but we did get a lot accomplished. We got about, um, roughly 300 bills passed inside of 56 bills, which is not a good way to do it, uh, but, but we, made, we had massive tax cuts, we, we reduced some regulation, we brought, a, brought an unprecedented money, amount of money into public education. I think we accomplished a lot this year in spite of what went on, and I think we proved that the system can work, and I think I would also agree that with 17 freshmen, we all learned uh, baptism by fire <laughs> this year, and I think that in itself will help us in this next legislative session. Senator Hughes, uh, we are running short on time, but okay. I wanted to give you an opportunity sure. <laughs> if you have a, have a chance to, to voice so, your opinion. Yeah, just real quick, I will, uh, I'm a little bit glasses half full type person, and I also feel that uh, we ended much better. In fact, I had people come around and like, this is what it's like. <laughs> this, is what, this is why we do this, this is what it's like. And so I think we can capitalize that and keep it going. Off session, I've gone to some conferences and things like that, and from talking with other legislators from states around us, they call us the unicorn. The unicamera is a unicorn, right? We're the only one in the United States, and it has a lot of merit. There's 49 senators that represent our, uh, our entire state population. We have a lot of 
power. I'm I'm an independent broker. I can bring bills. I don't have to ask permission from some speaker or whatever to bring my bill. I can do that, and and that's a positive thing. And so we've got to capitalize on our the positive things about it and get back there because it has worked for many years, and um, and I know we can stick with it and and get back to where it needs to be. So excellent. Yeah. Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks I really do appreciate it, and I appreciate the thoughtful discussion. The Nebraska legislature has a long history since the unicamera was established nearly a century ago. While much has changed, a lot has stayed the same. Nebraska Public Media News talked with an expert on Nebraska's State House and discussed whether a nonpartisan system has served the state well and why some feel change is necessary. Nebraska Public Media News reporter Jolie Peel has the story. Some say to predict the future, you need to look in the past. And according to Charlene Behrens, professor and author of two books on the unicameral, the 86-year history of the unicameral shows more bright days could be ahead. Because we have just the one house and all the legislation is done in that space, we have a more um, efficient approach to the whole process. I mean, look, for example, we seldom have a special session called because something didn't get done that has to get done. We seem to get things done pretty well. The idea of the single house system came about in the 1930s, spearheaded by then Nebraska U.S. Senator George Norris. A petition drive put the idea in front of voters, and in 1937, the first unicameral session was held. Norris himself said he wouldn't recommend it for um, the Congress. He, he believed that the nation was too large and too diverse for that. But in a state, particularly a relatively small state like ours, he thought it would work really well. And I think it has. Putting all senators on equal ground, giving a stronger voice to the people of Nebraska, and increasing efficiency are all benefits of the unicameral, Barron says. But no system is without its cracks, some of which have started to show the last few sessions. When asked what has shifted most in Nebraska State House in the past few decades, Barron said she's seen a specific change. I think one of the big things is that we are seeing the effects of term limits really come home to roost. Um, Nebraskans passed term limits for their legislators in 2000. The first led senators were term limited out in 2006. And since then, nobody has served more than two terms. A lack of institutional knowledge and mentorship contributed to challenges during the 2023 session, Barron says. However, not everyone thinks the legislature is moving in the wrong direction. A move to a partisan approach was proposed and denied last session, but it is the official platform of the Nebraska Republican Party. According to the NEGOP website, quote, the Nebraska Republican Party believes in a partisan legislature as an efficient and accountable branch of government. Senator Steve Erdman, who introduced a proposal for a partisan two-house legislature, says the current system isn't working. And similar states who use a partisan two-house system have better tax systems and policy outcomes. During the 2023 session, Erdman said, quote, I believe, as with all things we do in the legislature, once in a while you need to take a review of what you've accomplished and see if it is doing what you expected it to do. Barron sees it differently, saying senators should use the nonpartisan one-house system that has made Nebraska unique for 86 years. Use your, your own knowledge, your own research, the things that your staff helps you learn, the things you hear from lobbyists, use all that. And your own conscience and make your decisions that way, not based on what the national or even the state parties are saying. Uh, if that can happen, and I think it can, I hope it can, then um, we may pull back from this precipice of partisanship. I'm Jolie Peel. Nebraska Public Media News. Welcome back to Speaking of Nebraska. I'm joined today by Nebraska Public Media reporter Fred Knapp. Thanks so much for joining us, Fred. And we're going to talk about the legislature a little bit, something that you've been covering for over three decades. Uh, but 2023 was a little different. From your perspective, what was different about this session? I think that what struck me was the level of vitriol that the senators engaged in, uh, the personal nature of it, and the fact that it started so early in the session. What do you mean by started so early? Uh, the divisiveness, the 
Yes. That started so early? As soon as the transgender health limitations on abortion got out of committee, that triggered a filibuster that lasted essentially the rest of the session. And that leads right into my next question. We did see a lengthy filibuster by Michaela Kavanaugh. From your perspective, how did that impact the flow of the session? It was uh, cut it, it cut it off immediately. It cut off the flow. And then it was sort of like a python every once in a while loosening and things would get through and, uh, and then it would tighten up again. Uh, but what it did was it inspired the people who wanted to get their legislation passed to lump them all together in these Christmas tree bills. So one bill, which could be filibustered for eight hours at the first stage of debate, um, would contain perhaps 20 or 30 different bills. In the previous segment, Charlene Behrens discussed that term limits are changing the dynamics of the legislature. You have covered the ledge both before and after uh, Tim, term limits were uh, put in place. Do you share that belief that it's changing the way things are running? I do think so. If you're only allowed uh, eight years, uh, there's pressure to make a splash early and uh, get what you want done uh, rather than building long-term relationships. And another thing that's a dynamic is that uh, as things have become increasingly partisan, uh, that has uh, increased the divisiveness. Now, some people think that's uh, a good thing because uh, uh, to the extent that you're more partisan, you're more accountable. And they would argue that if you had party labels when people ran on the ballot, and you could see what party they belong to, that would give voters more information about what their likely positions are going to be. Contrast that with George Norris's original idea, which was that people ought to be elected uh, on their merits regardless of their party and the best would rise to the top. It's a tough question, but as you look ahead to covering 2024, do you expect much of the same or maybe a return a little bit to how it was previously? Well, I know Speaker Arch is trying to uh, get people to get together and, and improve the, the personal relationships. But when you look at one of the bills uh, that's going to be introduced or has already been introduced, the Sports and Spaces Bill, which would limit uh, uh, locker rooms and sports teams to the biological sex of people assigned at birth, uh, that s seems like it presages a, uh, a repeat of the kind of divisiveness that we saw this last session. Fred, I really appreciate your time and thanks for being here and talking about the legislature with me. That's all for this week on Speaking of Nebraska. Thank you to Senators Conrad, Jacobson, Hughes, and Blood for the thoughtful discussion on the future of the Nebraska legislature. Also, thank you to Fred Knapp, producer Jolie Peel, videographer Sam Broderson, and everyone behind the scenes who made the show possible. Next week, we will dive into the topic of medical marijuana and the latest petition drive to get it on the 2024 ballot. I'm Nebraska Public Media News Director Jay Omar. Have a great night.